Hey everybody, welcome back to Backcountry Amateur Radio. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the TID Radio TDH6 High Power Handheld Transceiver. We're mostly going to look at keypad programming. All right, so there's a package on Amazon you can get. It's the TID Radio, TID Radio, uh, TD as in Tango Delta H6, Hotel 6. And you know, it's basic radio, it's analog, it's dual band, and it works so far really well. I took it all down so you could see kind of what comes in the box. But I've been using almost every aspect of what's come in here just because it's so convenient. Uh, first off, you get, you know, the standard pre-programmed channels on this, on this uh, base unit. You get two batteries. And they're both this battery for the TDH6 and uh, 2200 milliamp hours. Plug it in. The other thing is this antenna, this factory antenna, isn't so bad. The antenna is a SMA female. And to boot, you also get this. This is your 771 style. So 771, kind of like the NA-771 from Nagoya that we're all really familiar with. This is the TD. So TID Radio, just in case you don't know, TID is Tiger International Development. Anyway, um, let's turn this thing on. Well, no, I'm going to wait for a second. Here's your wall charger. Here is the automobile charger, in case you don't have a 12-volt system in your car for your radio and your block your old cradle now <clears throat> if you do want to create your own system for charging this i think it's worth noting the data on the bottom <clears throat> the input going in is 10 volts at one amp and that means what is coming out of this guy is 10 volts at one amp which is pretty spot on and do you get 10 volts at one amp out of this guy? I don't know. So anyway, that is nice to have. I've used that to charge the batteries. Obviously, there's no other way. Um, and this this thing, which I never use these. Um, so wall charger, automobile charger, spare battery, spare antenna. There's some other stuff in here, you know, manual and all that stuff. I think the programming manual um, is pretty useful if just get to the uh, the software. And there's a piece of paper that comes in here that directs you to where to download the software for your computer and all that. Um, and I may have already lost the manual. I'm not the best with manuals because... I'm just the worst. Anyway, let's take a look at this radio. This radio, I guess, like I've kind of stated before, has kept me pretty happy. Um, I will say that it is a little difficult to film this screen. So I've come out to my garage where I've got some better lighting. But even then, oh, there we go. Check that out. Okay, so the lighting here is working out. Meanwhile, is it is it really working out? Uh, well, you're going to see a glowing screen the whole time anyway. So let's uh, let's get into this. Um, programming this radio is is basic, but I just want to go over a couple features really quick. So this is your standard like Kenwood style Baofeng integration. So I've already used. Baofeng and Radiodity um, speaker mics for this. You got your PTT, and here, this one's cool. This is your power button. So let's zoom in here. Anytime I switch that, it goes to the power. So that's the lower button here. Now, if you hold on to it, that opens up your monitor. Let's take a look at this button. So this is the second, the upper or middle button here. Turns on your FM radio. And let's go to 
filmed volume. I've got an idea. Not the greatest. Can't hear anything now. We'll plug in the 771 antenna. All right, so that's a lot better. Not that that's why we're here, but it works. Um, my default for power, personally, is low. And right now I want to show you how to program a simplex frequency. And then we'll go into programming a repeater frequency. And it's super easy. Here we go. All right, so... This is my repeater frequency. Uh, this is my downlink. This is my listening for the local repeater is 147.2. It's on a mountain about five, six nautical miles away. So, I mean, you can run the lowest possible power and you're going to get this, this repeater. And uh, anyway, let's just program the 147.2 as a simplex frequency into this radio. Notice up top, there's no DCS, no CTCSS, no plus or minus sign, which means there's no tones enabled, there's no coding en enabled or encoding, and also there's no shift, so it's not set up to work on a repeater. So simplex, it's ready for simplex. So let's go program a memory. Uh, let's just jump into the memories here, like 25. Oh, there's the offset. Um, their direction. Now you, we'll give it to these menu item 24 and 25 for repeater setup. Whoopsies. Nope. I don't want that. Now we're in memory. Let's save the simplex memory to memory zero. Notice that it doesn't say CH, which means there's no memory. There's no programming in there. By the way, I did a full reset on this radio because I uh, wanted to experiment with it. But if there's no memories programmed, when you hit VFO MR, there's not going to be a change to your screen. You're going to remain in VFO. So let's put this in. Memory, uh, let's put in just memory one, menu. There we go, back. Now I can hit memory, and now 147.20 simplex is in my radio on channel one. Let's back out of there, hit VFO MR. That was that basic. Super easy, right? Let's turn this into a repeater frequency. Now the repeater frequency, the uplink, has a positive shift of 0.6 megahertz, which means 147.8 is my uplink frequency and the 88.5 CTCSS tone. So let's go in and program that really quick. Do, 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 do. Um, offset, direction, positive. So that's gonna be plus adding to the value, the frequency value that you have. Whoopsies, got that quick. They don't want you to stay in there very long. Press menu to solidify your memory selection or your programming selection. Offset, now there's no decimal on the, uh, the keypad, so you just have to work around it. The decimal marks megahertz, so 0 0.6 megahertz, zero, zero. And press menu to retain that. So now we're gonna shift 0.6 megahertz. And now I also need to go program my CTCSS. CTCSS um, transmit is all we need to worry about on this repeater. And that is menu item 13. Press menu to edit. And you can either shift up, down, or you can just type in 88.5. I like that. And save that by pressing menu. Now, if you look up, positive shift, we're set to use this repeater. Let's test it. Kilo India 7, Whiskey, Julia, Papa. Keyed the repeater, threw out my call sign. No one came back because it's still pretty early, but it works. So I am going to save this. So let's go back to the memory, which is memory saving menu item 26. And uh, again, act quickly, press menu to edit. And we're gonna save that on channel 000 as my home channel.
or my main channel. Um, I, I like that. And that's done. So if I go to back into memory, recall, memory mode, channel zero has my repeater. Watch it shift. See that? KI7WJP clear. So that is that. That is programming it. Let's walk through it one more time. Let's go into VFO, MR, and there's another repeater with a similar settings, a few miles further away, a few miles to the west. And I'm not sure why it wants to do this. 147180. That's the repeater uplink or downlink frequency. The uplink is 0.6 megahertz positive. Whoops, let's get that focus back in there. Come on. There we go. And the only difference is the tone. So let's go to menu item 13 again and change our tone to 100 hertz. There we go. Menu to save it. Let's go back to menu item 26. Let's save it into menu channel one is channel zero, channel one is already saved. Channel two, let's save it into that. Press menu to edit and that. Menu to edit and channel two, menu to save. Now, when I back out of here, press memory recall or memory mode, that repeater is also saved. That is the Snowbird Intertie repeater. Let's test it. And I might need a little bit more power. So let's, I'm in the garage, got a garage door blocking the way. M, medium power, I think is about five watts. KI7WJP. Seven, J, L. Well, key the repeater and talk back to me. So that's great. Anyway, so that's saved. And now you have that. Now remember, any time you go in to save simplex, you have to turn off a bunch of stuff. Let's go back and do that. So I want to save the national calling frequency now, but I, I can't do that with any kind of encoding or shift. Let's go back. Let's put in our 146520 national calling frequency. We have to change stuff. You go into the direction menu item 24 and change it to none and it turns off the shift, which means I don't have to do anything here and I can just leave it. All right, so next I need to go to menu item 13 and turn off my encoding. And in order to do that, I can use arrows to go back to off or press zero, off. Menu to save and then back out. There's my simplex frequency and there's no encoding, there's nothing. And you can even press that to hit reverse. If you press the asterisk key or lock key, a quick press will reverse your frequency or you reverse your, uh, your offset. So I'll show you that in a second here. Anyway, I know there's no shift. There's nothing going on. I can now save this. So go back to menu item 26. I'm going to save it to memory on an empty channel, number three, menu to save it. And now back out. Let's go back into memory mode, and it, that is indicated by the channels down here. And 146.52 is saved, national calling frequency. Again, I can hit the reverse key or the lock button, quick press, reverse, nothing. So I know it's simplex. Now, if I go down to my repeater frequency and hit my asterisk and look for the reverse, you can see that now I am listening to, on an encoding right there, CT, and 178. So that means I'm listening to anybody using that repeater, I'm listening directly to their radio and not the repeater. But it also means that if I go to transmit, I'm transmitting on 147.18, which means they're going to hear me directly if they're within range. At any rate, that is the basics of programming this radio. So I'm gonna take that off reverse. Usually that's a monitoring feature anyway. And that is that for programming this radio using the keypad or in the field. You just need to know your settings, your shifts, and your tones that the repeater is using. 
but obviously it's simple enough if you're using simplex.